and Julia Sondu, showing you where development is happening. Please come and join us. West African bloc prepared for military intervention after Niger coup. ECOWAS says it is ready to restore democracy and describes President Mohamed Bazoum as a hostage. A West African regional political grouping has reiterated it is prepared to intervene militarily in Niger following last month's coup, describing the country's detained president, Mohamed Bazoum, as a hostage. ECOWAS's Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security, Abdul Fattah Moussa, made the comments as military chiefs of staff from the bloc met in the Ghanaian capital, Accra, on Thursday and accused Niger's military junta of playing cat and mouse with the grouping by refusing to meet its envoys. The meeting in Accra, which had originally been planned for last weekend, was called to discuss details of the standby military force authorized by ECOWAS when a deadline to release Bazoum and restore democracy expired. While Musa emphasized that armed intervention was a last resort should diplomatic efforts fail, he said a military operation remained on the table, amid skepticism over ECOWAS's willingness to intervene despite strong recent language. The military and the civilian forces of West Africa are ready to answer to the call of duty, he told assembled heads of defense staff from member states meeting at the Camp Burma military base in Accra. He listed past ECOWAS deployments in the Gambia, Liberia and elsewhere as examples of readiness. If push comes to shove we are going into Niger with our own contingents and equipment and our own resources to make sure we restore constitutional order. If other democratic partners want to support us they are welcome, he said. Musa strongly criticized the junta's announcement that it had evidence to put Bazoum on trial for treason. The UN, EU and ECOWAS have all expressed concerns about the conditions of his detention. The irony of it is that somebody who is in a hostage situation himself is being charged with treason. When did he commit high treason is everybody's guess, Musa said. Musa added that all of the bloc's members, except for those under military rule and Cape Verde, had agreed to provide troops. Echoing Musa, Nigeria's chief of defense staff, Gen Christopher Gwaben Musa, told the meeting, democracy is what we stand for and it's what we encourage. The focus of our gathering is not simply to react to events, but to proactively chart a course that results in peace and promotes stability. While little detail has been publicly disclosed over a potential Niger operation, other than expectations that Ivory Coast, Benin and Nigeria would contribute troops, the meeting is expected to focus on the practicalities of deployment if ordered, not least by those countries that do not share a border with Niger. Despite the strong language, a number of key countries that have said they would supply forces are facing domestic political pushback over the proposed intervention, including Nigeria and Ghana. Nigeria's Senate has expressed objections, while opposition parties in Ghana have questioned the legal basis for an intervention under the country's constitution. Another stumbling block is the African Union. The AU's Peace and Security Council met in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, on Monday for talks on the crisis in Niger. There were reports that a reportedly difficult meeting had rejected the proposed ECOWAS intervention with southern and northern African countries said to be fiercely against any military intervention, according to a diplomat who spoke to French media. While ECOWAS in theory does not require the AU's approval, the US Department of State has also indicated that it would prefer the crisis to be resolved peacefully if possible. The Accra meeting of the top ECOWAS commanders on Thursday and Friday comes after fresh violence in Niger, where jihadists killed at least 17 soldiers in an ambush. Jihadist insurgencies have gripped Africa's Sahel region for more than a decade, breaking out in northern Mali in 2012 before spreading to neighboring Niger and Burkina Faso in 2015. Those countries, all ECOWAS members, have since had military takeovers, driven in part by mounting anger at government failures to stem the bloodshed. Meanwhile, Niger coup backers call for mass mobilization amid military threat from regional bloc. As ECOWAS chiefs prepare to possible action against junta, Civic Group says, we need to be ready. Supporters of the Nigerian junta are calling for the mass mobilization of citizens against the threat of military action by a West African regional bloc that is calling for the restoration of the country's deposed president, Mohamed Bazoum. 
With a delayed meeting of military chiefs of staff of the ECOWAS blocs later this week, regional tensions over the July coup against Bazoom appeared to be deepening, despite the junta's efforts to suggest they were open to talks. Following the expiry of an ECOWAS ultimatum after the coup against Bazoom, led by members of his presidential guard, the group activated a standby force to restore democracy in Niger but has yet to deploy it. The latest moves in the crisis in the country, and a wider Sahel region that has been rocked by coups and jihadist insurgency, come amid tightening sanctions against Niger, even as representatives of the coup try to recruit regional backing. On Tuesday, the junta appointed Niger Prime Minister, Ali Mahaman Lamin Zaina, visited neighboring Chad and met its president, Mohamed Idris Deby, to seek support. Nigeria-led regional bloc ready to flex its muscle in Niger read more calls for mass mobilization are being pushed by one of several civic society groups in the Nigerian capital, Niame, which have come out in support of the coup and have been used by the mutinous officers to rally support to their cause, including organizing mass demonstrations. The new group, the Volunteers for the Defense of Niger, is seeking tens of thousands of volunteers from across the country to register to support the country's armed forces. It's an eventuality. We need to be ready whenever it happens, Amsaru Bako, one of the group's founders, told Associated Press. According to the group, the recruitment drive will launch on Saturday in Niame as well as in cities where invasion forces might enter, such as near the borders with Nigeria and Benin, two countries that have said they would participate in an intervention. Anyone 18 and over could register and the list would be given to the junta to call upon people if needed, said Bako. The junta was not involved in the recruitment drive, but was aware of the initiative, he said. It was unclear how serious the mobilization call was or what it was intended to achieve beyond attempting to rally backing for the coup. Regional tensions are deepening as the standoff between Niger and ECOWAS shows no sign of diffusing despite signals from both sides that they are open to resolving the crisis peacefully. Last week the junta said it was open to dialogue with ECOWAS after rebuffing the bloc's multiple efforts at talks, but shortly afterwards said it would charge Bazoom with high treason and recalled its ambassador from neighboring Ivory Coast. ECOWAS defense chief meet in Accra, Ghana, this week, for the first time since the bloc announced the activation of the standby force. It is unclear when or if the force will invade, but such an outcome would have devastating consequences, say conflict experts. A military intervention with no end in sight risks triggering a regional war, with catastrophic consequences for the vast Sahel that is already plagued by insecurity, displacement and poverty, said Mukahad Dermas, a senior analyst at Verisk Maplecroft, a global risk intelligence company. Niger was seen as one of the last democratic countries in the Sahel region south of the Sahara, and a partner for Western nations in the effort to beat back growing jihadist violence linked to Al-Qaeda and Islamic State. France, its former colonial ruler, and the US have approximately 2,500 military personnel in the region who train Niger's military and, in the case of France, conduct joint operations. Coups in the region have been rampant and Niger's is seen by the international community as one too many. But analysts say the longer the situation drags on, so the probability of an intervention fades as the junta cements its grip on power, probably forcing the international community to accept the status quo. On Tuesday, the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, said there was still space for diplomacy to return the country to constitutional rule and said the US supported ECOWAS's dialogue efforts, including its contingency plans. This is the end of our program today. See you on Intervlog same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you for watching Intervlog. Thank you.